Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Floyd Richmond. Today I'll be showing you how to use NoteFlight. Uh, this is a notation program. It's free. It runs in an internet browser. It runs on uh, smartphones as well as in your laptop computers or desktop computers. And it's a wonderfully powerful program. Uh, if you've uh, never been to NoteFlight.com, just go ahead and navigate there now if you would. N-O-T-E-F-L-I-G-H-T.com Go ahead and click the sign up button if you've not signed in before and if you have signed in before go ahead and hit the login button enter your username username and password and hit login when you first open note flight it opens you to your home score which has a good number of which has all the scores that you might have worked on previously if you click on this note flight icon up here it will also take you to the scores area which shows you other scores that other people have uploaded. Here's a piano solo that someone has uploaded recently. I think I'll just check it out. Click on it. It loads. And then with my toolbar across the top of the screen, I can press play. and some very nice harmony into a modulation into the key of E major there, which is wonderful. Uh, you may explore all the different composers' uh, materials here in the score area. Uh, you can search for uh, titles by uh, name if you want to search for Beethoven. Just go ahead and type it in. And then all the scores that uh, people have entered that were by Beethoven uh, just show up here. So, definitely worth some time exploring just some items and materials that are here. So back to Note Flight, we've got the Home button, which takes you to your list of scores. We've got the Scores button, which takes you to the list of scores that everyone is um, creating on Note Flight and uh, those that those they have decided to share. And also up here and here is a New Score button. I'm going to go ahead and click that New Score button now. And this will let me create either a blank document or uh, import uh, XML or MIDI files from another notation application. If you've got Finale or Sibelius or MuseScore or any other modern notation application, you can save XML files and then upload them into MuseScore. Right now, we're going to start from a blank score sheet and begin composing from scratch. You will notice that I have a uh, toolbar across the top and I also have a ribbon here that currently has nothing on the screen yours probably came up with something you can turn on your rhythms you can turn on your durations durations and rhythms you can turn on the edit features as you begin to turn on these tools all of these tools show up up here but they begin to take more and more screen space and so I would use to just keep a couple of these turned on uh, so that you have access just to the ones that you mainly use. If you have a little uh, less than sign like this, you can click this and it reduces your uh, duration menu to the ones that are the primary ones that will be used. If you have a greater than sign like this, it means that you could open that to score up and it will give you additional options. Okay, what I'd like for us to do now is to enter a song with which we're already familiar. Just go ahead and type into the uh, title area uh, the name of the piece. Up here where it says composer, uh, this song has been attributed to many different composers over the years. I'm sure some music historian has probably got the definitive answer. Uh, there is probably a different lyricist uh, than there is composer for this particular tune. So you can type in the lyricist, you can type in the composer. If there's a subtitle, of course, you can type that in as well. If you'd like to start entering notes immediately into the computer, well, you can do that also. So let me just show you this if I could real quickly. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, pull up the notation for the song that we'll be entering here. And there we've got a little bit. We're just going to pull a little bit in here. Uh, I won't be able to show you everything right now, uh, so I'm going to quickly jump through here. I'm going to uh, put in a G and I tell it that it should be a half note and uh, hit the delete key to erase that G and turn it into a half rest. Use the right cursor key to come over here and go G 
uh, type another G. Uh, I'm going to use the left bracket key to tell that that should be a quarter note. And that has selected quarter notes up here for me also. And I hit the right bracket to tell that that should be a longer note. Uh, you probably heard that wrong note uh, that was just played in there. And that wrong note was an F sharp. It was because I didn't set my key signature to the song at the beginning of the piece. So up here in the measure menu, I can find something that says change the key signature. Before you do this, you need to make sure that you select all the measures until it's in the key of G. And then because uh, it originally entered the F thinking it was a natural, uh, it didn't come out with the correct uh, sharp or flat on it. Uh, you can type the plus key with the note selected to add a sharp to it. You can type the minus key to add a flat to it. And, whoops, uh, afraid I erase that note somehow. I, you can erase the note, re-enter it to put a natural on it. I'm sure there's an easier way to do it than that. Okay, so basically I've got praise God from whom all blessings flow. Getting off to a good start here. Now, uh, this actually lets us enter voice one and voice two. But I think it's uh, equally useful for me to hold the shift key down and type a D. And then just continue to do that. Oh, uh, but that one should have been a B. So I'll just keep doing this. And uh, that's a very quick means of entry. Uh, let's go ahead and put the bass clef in here as well. So over here, I will click on a note. Let's make it into a half note. I could have done that with my bracket, or I can choose the value here. I can type the delete key to erase it. I can cursor over to the correct note, and there's my B. There's another B. I'll use my left bracket to type the left bracket key to change it to the correct note value. This time when I pressed an F, it played an F sharp because it's in the correct key. While I'm here, I can use the right bracket to change that into the correct note. Okay, so far so good. Okay, I think I'll close this menu because it's just popping up on me too many times over there. So you can open and close your menu by clicking the menu button here. Uh, I'll now go to my tenor part and type Shift G and Shift G, right arrow, Shift D, right arrow, Shift E, right arrow, Shift B, right arrow, Shift E. Right arrow, shift D, right arrow, shift G. And since that G is in the wrong octave, I will type command down arrow, and it will jump down an octave immediately. Okay, uh, there's only a little bit more I want to show on this today. And so let me just go ahead and show you this if I could. If you click on either of these notes, uh, just press escape to clear any selection you may have. Click on either note and then type control L. Now this is going to be control L on both the Macintosh and Windows computers because command L on the Macintosh is used for something else. Alright, P-R-A-I-S. You can just start typing your lyrics. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Semicolon. And now I've got a verse of lyrics in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click on this particular measure. Uh, up here you will typically see a little play button. You can start it playing from there. Just click on that play button. That is a quick and easy way to enter your notes into the computer. Uh, once you are happy with the notes that you have entered, you should go ahead and hit the save button and that will save that into your NoteFlight cloud account. NoteFlight is really handy because you can go to any other device in the world whether it's a smartphone or a uh, desktop computer or a friend's desktop computer or a friend's laptop computer log into your NoteFlight account and when you get there your home screen will have that song that you just entered into the computer 
and you can begin working on it on any other device. This is exceptionally handy. Okay, the assignment that I'm going to give everyone is very simple. What I would like you to do is to go ahead and enter this entire song, the doxology, into the computer. Uh, you can uh, watch our previous videos for an entire copy of the score, but I'll just place the entire score on screen now so that you can pause this video and uh, position this maybe in a part of the position this perhaps in a part of the window where you can see it all the time and you can come over and make your note flight screen maybe smaller like this and command minus a few times to zoom so you can see the whole page and now you can put your score in while you're watching the larger score over here uh, one other thing I should mention if I could if you need extra measures just click in this bar up here and there's a little plus sign here if you hit the plus sign it will create extra measures for you I may need to uh, zoom in on a little bit so I can quickly and easily hit that plus sign oh there's the plus sign there I think I missed it okay there's an extra measure if you need that next uh, measure to go to the next line you can click on this bar line and press the return key and that will force everything after that bar line to move down to the next measure you can copy and paste uh, notes if you have measures that are used again now that's not the case in this particular song but if it was you just select them by clicking in the first measure shift clicking in the last measure typing command C or control C on Windows click on the first measure where it should be pasted type command V and okay in that case I selected two measure two staves so I had to paste it into two staves uh, this particular song does not actually have a repeat like that so I may want to erase that and begin again uh, if I want to delete a measure somewhere I can just click in the measure hit the minus button there to delete it and it deletes that single measure you'll see that I'm quickly down to just two measures on this line and now I'm just back down to one measure and I can also uh, delete the notes individually just pressing the escape key takes you out of any given mode and so you can then click on something else and begin editing it in that mode uh, the last thing I need to tell you here is that uh, you can enter chord symbols this way click on a note type command K and then just type the chord symbol so that's G and then if you use the tab key it will take you to the next one tab and D tab E minor tab B minor tab E minor tab D tab G and so putting the chord symbols in is very quick also okay I say one last thing but then there's always another last thing notice that the lyrics here are a little closer to the soprano line than they are to the alto line up here in the score area if okay up here in the score area if I come to the settings menu I'm going to do this with no selection whatsoever settings set that up to 18 yeah too much let's go the other way settings set that down to 4.5 and tell it to close and it closes it as much as it can it tries to avoid collisions with things like uh, note stems and uh, words and so sometimes it will automatically open it larger than what you uh, believe it should okay when you're finished with this you uh, need to hit the save button in order to submit this to your for your homework you click on the connect button here uh, you have to uh, choose from the share menu here to share the score with anyone and anyone with a link can view this you don't want them to, to uh, comment on it or edit. well you might want them to comment on it but you don't want them to edit it uh, if you want other people to be able to find your score by or, uh, searching for it or show up in the feed uh, of scores that you've already seen you can turn that on 
Um, I don't think you need to turn that on for our class. I think you should put this. Anyone can access the score, can view it, and that should be pretty much what it is. You're going to, uh, down here under copyright, uh, you're going to say this is an arrangement of a public domain work. Uh, this is an arrangement of a public domain work. And you can go ahead and uh, save that button. And now um, you will need to know, well, how can people find this? See this little triangle, uh, three uh, dots button here? Click on that and choose copy link to the score. And the link has been copied to the clipboard that lets anyone else view this. And that link that's in the clipboard is what you will share with other people. I'm going to go over here to Microsoft Word and just pretend like you were on a forum on Moodle. Type Command V and paste that and that will open up that score. All right, notation software is going to be useful to you throughout your college career. Uh, you will not believe all the ways that you can use it. You can create arrangements of your own scores. You can do your theory homework. Uh, you probably get extra credit for doing your theory work using notation software. If not, you should ask your teacher if that's a possibility. Even a couple of extra points on every single assignment would be worthwhile. Okay, uh, notation software is useful for creating on your cut your own custom arrangements of your own original compositions. Notation software is for creating arrangements of uh, songs that your uh, groups would play. Uh, notation software provides a rich library of additional materials that uh, you can share with other people. It lets you put down for posterity uh, the works that you have created and reading notation may not be the same in a few hundred years but and there will always be people who will understand what you have done here and who will appreciate what you have done here and everybody enter the entire praise God from whom all blessings flow into note flight uh, make sure you use the original score that I sent you it's unlike any other version of praise God from whom all blessings flow uh, it's okay if you put layers one and layer two uh, into the same layer here uh, if you know how to do that in note flight just uh, search over here in the menus for voice one and voice two right here's your voice menu upper voice and lower voice then you can use those uh, to uh, put them uh, in different layers as well as long as the uh, voices uh, travel together with the same rhythm there is no need to put them in an upper and a lower voice uh, except perhaps to do stems up and stems down uh, separately for the two different voices if you want stems up and stems down you have to put them into two voices if you want independent rhythms that is the soprano is singing whole notes while the alto is singing quarter notes then you have to do those in different voices also don't forget to save don't forget to share don't forget to upload the link to the forum alright thanks so much appreciate all your work May God richly bless you.